I just wanted to emerge from my silence just because I've been following this news about the new Vatican norms on apparitions and it's really fascinating to see how these norms have been applied to Garabandal, Medjugorje and El Escorial which have all been featured on this channel and have received quite a lot of analysis especially Garabandal. The thing that uh, we need to remember most of all and this is the key point is that the new norms basically exclude any judgment on supernaturality of apparitions so whereas in the past it was basically seen that if the church said um nothing stands in the way of the church or oh, that wasn't the old category uh constant de supernaturale was the, was the was the old category if it was constant de supernaturalitate then it meant that this accords with the apparitions being supernatural that's been done away with so now if you haven't been following the the document the church the the di the dicastery of the doctrine of the faith um no longer will be giving a statement on the supernatural nature of apparitions that's no longer apparition discernment is no longer about whether the apparition is actually from from god which is really strange right so the church the vatican no longer can, no longer places its highest criterion of authenticity as yes this is coming from god instead it is taking a pastoral approach, you might say, where the highest degree of rating that the Holy See, that the uh, doctrine of faith will give is nihil obstat. Nothing stands in the way from, this, from these messages, from this apparition, from this pilgrimage place being promoted. So there is actually in the document a final caveat, which is the Pope himself, may declare that an apparition is supernatural you know there's something quite nice about that caveat about the pope saying that that an apparition may be supernatural back in the day when i was doing my research on fatima and the third secret of fatima not the third secret of fatima on um on the um which aspect of fatima was it on the the truth of the truth of fatima basically when i was doing my research on that I discovered that there's a category in the history of the church called public prophecy. The idea was that, that if you declare Fatima as public prophecy rather than private revelation, it means everyone has to believe it. Uh, because obviously, this is maybe this is important because it's at, the, it's at the root cause of the new categories in discerning of apparitions. It was felt that constant de supernaturalitate basically meant this is part of public revelation and so the new categories are trying to get away from that so nihil obstat basically means nothing stands in the way if you want to dip into it go ahead if you like it go go ahead you know give it a try there's no it's not going to it's not going to harm you basically so um i discovered in my fatima research that in the history of the church there was a category of public prophecy I think it goes back to Innocent the Third, or it's certainly in the 13th century, or Lateran, maybe it's Lateran III, one of the Lateran councils, that the church declares that a pope alone, the pope alone, has this prerogative of declaring that uh, an apparition or an occurrence is public prophecy. And if he declares it as public prophecy, it has a bindingness on the faithful that is that is beyond private revelation it's it's a public prophecy it's something that god has made known publicly and the pope has a special prerogative to say yes this was an instance of public prophecy maybe the pope and so so by putting the ability to declare something as supernatural in the hands of the holy father you know that's not novel i haven't looked at any videos on this subject i'm sure that some commentators are saying that oh this is a this is a takeover now only the pope has this supreme magisterial authority to declare something as supernatural and and we can't trust francis etc 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 but actually it's actually pretty traditional for the idea that the pope has this special charism of declaring that something is public prophecy okay 
So going back to the categories, Medjugorje has been given the category of Nihil Obstat. Now the, uh, the uh, leader of the Dicastery of the Doctrine of Faith, he has issued a document in which he says, yeah, although it's Nihil Obstat, not all of, them, all of the messages are decent. Some of the messages are dodgy. He says, though, that the vast majority, and we're talking about a lot of messages. I've got videos on that. I've got a lovely video, one of my early videos, on, on the big challenge to the authenticity of Medjugorje is what Our Lady is not saying. The messages are generally banal. So, so he says in, in the document, yeah, most of the, most, there's only a few messages that are really problematic. Some are a bit apocalyptic. And it's true, there were some in the early days, but, but the messages have drifted away from apocalypticism and they've become more banal over the years and so so he says that because most of the messages are basically okay and because there's a lot of good stuff going down in Medjugorje it seems like a good thing to say Neil Obstat let nothing stand in the way and because of the new categories it means that the Vatican doesn't have to declare doesn't have to investigate whether it's a fraud or not like whether the whole claims of Mary actually appearing to the to the adults are um, fraudulent because in terms of what's going down there, in terms of the messages, Neil Obstat, nothing stands in the way. And it even says this does, he makes it clear that this isn't a judgment on the impeccability of the, of the people that are alleged to have seen the apparitions. It's just saying nothing stands in the way of the devotion going to Medjugorje and the vast majority of the messages seem unproblematic. I honestly thought that and, but then another interesting thing is from now on, because there's more messages coming out, basically, basically the Vatican, it seems to have reigned in, quote unquote, the gospel, because from now on, the Vatican is going to approve any messages um, before they're published. At least that's that's how the, the um, um, prefect describe the situation now there's going to be some rubber stamp just to check that this is without you know that it's not uh, blatantly contradicting aspects of of the catholic faith but i think we can expect that that is not going to happen but but anyway because well i don't believe that the messages are supernatural anyway but i do think that so from a purely human point of view um, if they aren't supernatural, the people the, that, that are interested, that are vested in maintaining Medjugorje, are hardly going to be issuing, issuing messages, now they've got to be approved by the Vatican, that are going to be uh, problematic. But we'll never know, because presumably the Vatican will only publish ones that it's given. They'll only be given rubber stamps, but they're rubber stamped before they're published. So some people can see this as a way of basically reining in the visionaries. It'd be interesting, because this is a Medjugorje one of the problems might be that what constitutes Medjugorje and like there's the monthly messages but then what about the anniversary messages on the birthdays of the the seers or the ledge seers and the random ones that they sometimes get um I mean do those ones need to be assessed or can one of the visionaries quote unquote go rogue and start saying, issuing messages without Vatican approval. Um, and in the, like the, the world of um, internet fake news, how do we even maintain what constitutes Medjugorje? What constitutes a message from Medjugorje? And is there going to be a procedure whereby, um, like, usually... Usually when you go to Medjugorje, the way it works is you go on quote-unquote Apparition Hill and the visionary gives the message and then it's translated and given out. I think they'll still want that to happen. I think that they won't appear online until the Vatican has... The, some guy from the Vatican, some, some lowly priest, has had a look at them and said, yeah, that's all right. Um, but probably they still will be... They probably won't have this Vaticanista next to Mirana, Miriana or whoever it might be, um, <laughs> listening to the message and then saying, yeah, we can read that one out. Or, no, we need to change that before we release that. Don't think so. I think it will probably be announced then, but it will only go online and be published 
if it is uh, approved. But that might lead to some people doing um, their own little website. Some Medjugorje fanatic might well be there at every apparition. There are loads of people that live in Medjugorje now and go to all the events that, that will, up date, will upload them on some website before the... Um, the CDF person, the DDF person, has been able to analyze it and approve it. That could make an interesting thing. The messages that get um, moderated and when they get moderated, that could make an interesting um, analysis. So, so yeah, there's an issue about the Vatican saying in Pramata about Medjugorje and then defining what constitutes Medjugorje in terms of whether it's just the weekly messages or whether it's going to also be the all of the seers, all of the alleged seers, or what about someone at Medjugorje who happens to get a quote unquote message? We all know people that have been to Medj and have said that they've had something wacky going on in them. I shouldn't say wacky, some special experience going on and feel they've got a message. I've met plenty of people like that. So the Vatican um, probably has to have quite clear definitions of of what, what of Medjugorje has the imprimatur. Personally, I feel it was the um, neo-Obstat, not imprimatur. Um, the, um, personally, I felt that the category that the Vatican put um, Garibandao and El Escorial would have been more appropriate for Medjugorje also. Curator, take care, we will um, take care, let, it, let there be care taken, um, or care is, is taken over these, over these uh, phenomena, over these messages which I think would be acknowledging the mixed nature of the messages um, more um, uh, appropriately, because I think anyone that does serious research on Medjugorje, and the the document from the DDF did acknowledge the, the thing about Our Lady's uh, birthday and this kind of era, but it, it didn't acknowledge some of the other... Um, problems that uh, are in some of the early messages in particular of the messages. But I, as I'd said in my previous video, I felt that the biggest thing against Medjugorje was how banal the messages were. But maybe the banality has been the very thing that's enabled it to get the nihil obstat. Because if the messages were full on, like for instance, El Escorial, El Escorial is apocalyptic, totally apocalyptic, and it's, it's a really hardline message. And that's probably the reason why it's been given the a curator. The thing I noticed about El Escorial when I went there and my uh, experience of the people involved in El Escorial, who are really lovely people, is that, is that basically they are, uh, they are kind of evolving the, the movement beyond the messages in a big way. And so Karata seems appropriate because Karata is in that category. It says that the church should try and help the people that have a devotion to this apparition to uh, be fully Catholic and draw good fruits from uh, the um, phenomena, even if not everything is decent. And remember, none of this is about the supernatural. Karata doesn't, um, in one sense, this is the interesting thing, in one sense, Nihil Obstat and Kurata are really saying exactly the same thing about whether the apparition is genuine. It's, they're both saying an agnosticism over whether the apparition is genuine or not. It's not because that's not the lens that's being taken. It's not asking the question, did Mary appear there? It's not, it's not even asking that question. Ra is talking about the content and the um, practices that take place um, and something of the biography of the, of the seers that's deeply associated with the message. So, um, so we've got Kurata given for Garabandal and for El Escorial. It doesn't surprise me because the messages have an apocalyptic dimension and that seems to be one of the things that the Vatican is particularly worried about, apocalyptic messages. And you can see why, because um, I'm being a bit cynical here, but the church basically likes the idea of messages and apparitions that are kind of gentle, kind of soft, kind of um, banal, and any messages that are going to be like hardline and apocalyptic 
and talking about hell and damnation, kind of nasty things. Um, they are, I mean, that's that's discuss that, I suppose. But they don't really want to give much promotion of those things. Remember the kind of um, theology that we have now in the Catholic Church, increasingly. Um, whether that is um, the Holy Spirit working or whether that is just a human reality is another issue. But uh, it seems like um, the curata is being given to these two apparitions that I would say are no more mixed than Garabandal. The only difference is you can't you can't um, put a lid on. Sorry, a Medjugorje, I should have said. They're no more mixed Medjugorje. The difference is you cannot put a lid on Medjugorje at this point. And so, and so, whereas Garabandal, they don't need to give it um, a Neil Obstat. And Eros Goriel also. I mean, Eros Goriel, you've got about most days of the week when the public devotion happens, you've got about like 20 people there. It's, it's not a big, it's not a big um, a phenomena. Um, and mainly the phenomena is about running old people's homes and looking after the elderly, which is a lovely, um, a lovely work. Uh, and is something that the bishops can encourage and this kind of thing. So curata for those two apparitions or alleged apparitions, um, that seems to be expected. But like I said, those who love um, Garabandal and think it was from Our Lady, um, they don't necessarily need to be too disheartened by that because it does still, curata does still allow for a private personal um, um, personal fostering of devotion uh, to Our Lady of Garabandal. However, it is not to be public because there are considered to be many problematic elements with Garabandal. I've spoken so much about how there are um, shadow sides to Garabandal and I don't think that you can give one clear definition, one clear judgment on Garabandal as a whole. I've said lots of stuff on that. There's good stuff, there's bad stuff. I don't know what I think about it. I think that Our Lady was at work there some of the time that she did appear, you know, some of it seems that way. But also simultaneously, there was a lot of human stuff involved. Um, I've looked at the chronology, I've looked at how... Um, how some of that stuff seems to have been invented, and it is totally super apocalyptic. The thing that surprises me about the Medjugorje thing is, is if you speak to hardline Medjugorjes, it's a bit like the Freemasons, I suppose. They don't tell you the full stuff until you go a few rungs in, a few levels in. But if you speak to real Medjheads, if you're going to use that word, maybe it's slightly derogatory. If you devotees of Medjugorje, is they know about the uh, the secrets. And they know about the whole uh, invisible ink stuff, and they know about the um, the uh, chronology of the kind of um, triumph of the immaculate heart stuff that that is as part of. I mean, if you talk to real devotees, that is really a big deal. And and when um, when this is going to happen, the fact that this priest is going to die, uh, he can't die. Um, so there's only a certain number of years before it can happen. That ties in, it parallels rather, um, Garabandal. It parallels Garabandal in that it's Garabandal has an equally apocalyptic um, end game uh, and chronology. And I have a video on how the two chronologies are not compatible. Either one is going to be true or the other is going to be true. They, they don't actually match up. And Ella Scoriala has got really... Um, apocalyptic end game which involves a lot of people dying and uh a pretty pretty uh like um pretty horrible um end game or you might say that it shadows stuff that's mentioned in the book of revelation in some ways using that kind of apocalyptic language anyway um so the fine the main point about this is is now attention is on the holy father will he say that he thinks that it's safe to believe that Medjugorje is supernatural, that it is Our Lady appearing. I don't think he will. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think the Vatican um, likes this situation where it now has been able to um, approve the pilgrimages fully 
without approving any supernatural um, elements of Medjugorje. That's been bracketed. Although pastorally, I think it's problematic because when you get Neil Obstat, basically, pastorally, people are going to think this is supernatural. No matter how much the Vatican insists, all Neil Obstat doesn't refer to any claim that Our Lady is actually appearing there. And it doesn't bind you in any way to think that Our Lady is appearing there. I think that's likely going to be the takeaway from most Medjugorje followers. That, 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 exactly what it, that is exactly what it is saying when it isn't saying that. And um, I think that could be problematic going forward. How um, um, how that how that distinction is is maintained while still um, I think there's a financial involvement because Medjugorje is obviously um, a, a, a popular pilgrimage site. Perhaps there are donations coming into the Vatican from devotees of of Medjugorje, and most of all, most of all, I think is about containing. Largely, it is about contain Medjugorje, but if you had done a curator, it it would have contained it even more so. But they chose, whatever reason, not to do the curator. They chose to do the Nihil Obstat, but maintaining that from now on, the messages are subject to Vatican approval. Um, I think that's a kind of analysis of the situation. I'm sure that Garabandal followers are a little bit upset, but the church has made it, that the DDF has made it clear that known constant supernaturalitate, which, which Garabandal had already um, received, uh, translates as curato, basically. So it's really, there hasn't been an extra commission on Garabandal, an extra investigation into the apparitions and their content and the, um, the deeds that occurred there. And so we shouldn't have expected that to be been upgraded, right? At least it wasn't one of the lower rankings where it says that basically the church should do everything it can do to, to stop people going there. So at least that's, that's a, the silver lining in this situation. I think that um, probably the pronouncement will encourage um, El Scorial and Garabandal devotees to ask for commissions new commissions on their apparitions and the phenomena and the messages to um, get a nihil obstat uh, because um, because we're dealing with a purely human analysis now not any kind of um, prayerful um, um, well we're no longer dealing with with having to make the big claim of there being a supernatural involvement we're dealing with the rather smaller claim that the messages and the deeds and occurrences are um, um, maybe maybe promoted, maybe followed, which is a much uh, weaker thing to have to um, uh, get the DDF to authorize than to authorize the idea that this is in accord with the the occurrences being from God. It's um, basically it means now that, in a manner of speaking, I could. Um, do my own little um, apparition movement based in based in my flat and um, and release the messages and if loads of people started coming and and they were all doing the rosary and living holy lives um, the church could give and it became massive let's say like a thousand people occur to up every day the church could give it a Neil Obstat without really and let's say I wasn't obviously uh, profiteering from it and doing kind of evil stuff. The church could say, yeah, Neil Obstat, um, because we don't really care about whether we're not really going to consider whether um, whether the supernaturalness is, um, um, is, is happening. So, so I think that's enough analysis on, on the new documents. It's been a really interesting, um, uh, really interesting development in the discernment of apparitions and how the church has extracted any consideration of supernaturalness now from the general analysis of the, the DDF on apparitions. The surprising thing, yeah, is that Medjugorje's messages of Medjugorje and the phenomenon is given a Neil Obstat. But like I said, my biggest issue with Medjugorje was the banality and how little it was saying. So the fact that it says so little of any like of any spark 
apart from some of the early apocalypticism and this one or, and this kind of end times chronology uh, that the more um, higher uh, initiates in Medjugorje movement know about, that probably helped it to get a Neil Obstat. And that's probably the very reason why Garabandal, uh, with its um, what it called, what the devotees call the second public message, which I kind of have my own take on whether that is a second public message, um, you know, that um, that's not going to help it. Cardinals, bishops, priests are on the way to perdition and taking many souls with them. That's not going to help you. Um, and and the movement's emphasis, the Garabandal movement's emphasis, and I don't think it goes back to the seers, not in the early days, on warning, miracle, uh, chastisement. That's not going to help to get um, a Neil Obstat for certain, because um, that doesn't really, that doesn't, doesn't accord with public revelation. And because it doesn't accord with public revelation, um, it can't really receive a Neil Obstat, because it really does seem to be adding something to the deposit of faith. So um, there should be caution in preceding that. But it might be true. It might be supernatural. It might be correct. At least the new norms are not really um, set, set up to make that judgment. Okay, that's enough on this subject. Um, may God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.